Hey everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts. Um, in the last uh, tutorial, or one of the last tutorials, the one where I did the art doll, I shared how to take one of these fabric leaves that just come from the dollar store or Walmart or wherever and impress it into your clay and cut it out to make a pendant. This time I'm going to make a mold of said leaf so that we can pour resin in it like I did on this one which was just a different shaped leaf. You could also just go out to your backyard and get a leaf off the tree and do the same thing. Alright, probably not the smartest thing to put your uh, amazing mold putty on paper. <laughs> Alright, so I've got two relatively equal amounts, just eyeballing it. The Amazing Mold Putty you can get um, at just about any craft store. You can also get it online. And it really is just this easy. You just mix the colors quickly because it does set up really fast. With a large amount like this, it does take a bit of work. Alright, now the next thing you want to try is to get an area without these type of folds and stuff in it. Alright. I probably could use the larger... Leaf, but I'm just going to go with what I got right now. Starting at one end of your piece, try to roll the piece that you're molding into the amazing mold putty. Got it shaped just a bit and I want to push it deeper. And then push it back up against the leaf shape again. Alright, I've got, whoa. Got it just about like I want it and then I'm going to just take a stamping block or whatever. And just give the top a flattening. Alright. That's really all there is to it. While this sets up, I just thought I'd share with you this is the the smaller size of the Amazing Mold Putty. It does come in a larger tub size as well. And I really like this stuff. It gives some great, it gives great detail. Like you can see the lines in the leaf and this was just from that fabric leaf All right, just like the clay will pick up the the texture that will transfer into the amazing mold putty I don't know why I love 
I love the reverse of something. <laughs> of anything, I guess. Just something about making that reverse that I find very interesting. Alright, I'll be back after this sets and we'll unmold it. Alright. Since this product really doesn't take any time at all to set up, 15 to 20 minutes. And don't put it on your paper. <laughs> put it on a piece of foil or glass or I'm just going to break this off of the polymer clay piece just by bending it back and as you can see pretty got lovely lovely texture in there all right now I'm gonna do some um, resin and fill it up all right and this time I'm gonna be using the amazing clear cast And it is super clear. Um, it does take 24 hours to set up. But it's super fun to use. And I'm going to use some, uh, some gold flakes with it. Alright. Let me get set up and I'll be right back. All right, just to share a few of the things that you can use in resin. Um, this one is metallic flakes, and this is in the silver. Well, it's actually in the gin and tonic. It's the indigo blue brand, and there are lots of brands. Um, Mona Lisa, metal flakes. Um, mm-hmm. Cosmic Shimmers has a Metal Flakes, and there are several other brands. <clears throat> Mica Powders, Pearl X, Perfect Pearls. Um, this is the primary elements. You can use any of those in the resin. Chalk Pastels. Uh, Illumilite. Illumilite has a, a dye. Uh-huh. All over the place today. And I could mix um, some of the dye into the resin. Um, in this particular instance, I'm not going to be mixing much resin. And if I used the dye, it would almost over-intensify the color because I'm wanting a green. So I'd have to mix it, which would mean I'd have to put a full drop... <laughs> Of each color of the dye to get the green because I don't have a green dye all right so that being said I'll need a, a measuring cup and a stir stick and I'll be right back all right I don't know how well you'll be able to see on this cup but it has measurements if I were to try to pour only enough resin to fill this mold it wouldn't be enough volume of the resin for it to set properly so I'll have to mix more than what I need to fill this mold so I'm just gonna get I'm gonna grab a couple of other molds and have them ready and standing by to fill up alright so I'm gonna pour in my resin it is a one-to-one -one ratio and I'm going to probably mix about six ounces, three of the A and three of the B. All right, I'll be right back. All right, now I'm just going to give this a stir to get the two parts of the resin to mix. Always follow the safety instructions that are provided with your resin. If you're sensitive to um, anything like this, be sure to wear gloves. Um, this doesn't really have a strong smell or anything, but do uh, use precaution and use it in a well-ventilated area. All right, 
I'm going to let that set for two minutes. I stirred it really vigorously. I'm not really worried about the bubbles at this point. That's why we're going to let it set two minutes. Alright, it takes plenty of time to cure, so we have a lot of working time. So I'm going to let that set, and then I'll be back. Alright, now it's had a little time to set up. I'm going to take a little of this primary elements in the... I have no idea what color it is. And when I say a little bit, I mean just a small amount. I don't want it to make the resin um, opaque in any way. I still want it to be really translucent. Alright, and then I'm going to take one of these chalk pastels in this light green color. And I'm just going to scrape a goodly amount. Again, I don't want to mess with its translucency. Alright, then I'm going to give it a stir. Now, I don't know if you can see the shimmer that is in there, just from that tiny little bit. grab this is my mold for my crystals that I made and I'm gonna fill this up first and the reason that I wanted to fill that up first is because it's easier to pour a small amount into a shallow mold. Make sure I'm still in frame. And I'm gonna start pouring and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna move the pour around the mold. I'm just gonna pour and let it pour in one place and let it flow to fill the mold. Take my little stirry stick and gently scrape the sides. And then I'm going to use it to kind of move some of these metal flakes around. Push them down in the mold a little bit. Because they do kind of want to float. Alright, that is so pretty. I can tell just, just right now. <laughs> I love green though. Green is my favorite color. So of course I think it was think it was pretty all right so this just needs to set up and it will take um, overnight I'll let them set overnight 
and I will come back in the morning and share with you the unmolding. One of the things I suggest you do is monitor it for like the first 30 minutes or so because anytime you put an inclusion into resin bubbles will want to come out and they don't all want to come out <laughs> right when you pour it sometimes it will take you know 20 or 30 minutes and just take a, a flame a lighter a, and sweep over the surface and it will bust the bubbles all right all right all right here it is after setting overnight and I'm just gonna bend the mold back and pop the piece out All right. now as you can see the piece is not shiny and the reason for that is because the polymer clay piece was not shiny now if I would have wanted to I could have buffed this up and put a glaze on it and it would have it would have helped that but I'm gonna show you what to do to make it shine again but first I'm gonna trim some of these edges Uh, just using your scissors or an exacto knife, craft knife, whatever. Alright, I'm gonna finish this and I'll be back. Alright, I'm gonna take this is some Varathane gloss that was sent to me by my dear friend Judy McInnes. I usually use, um, I usually use Rust-Oleum um, Ultimate Polyurethane, which is may the maker of Varathane. So they're very similar products. This happens to be the Varathane Triple Thick, and it, it is triple thick, which is not to be confused with the Deco Arts Triple Thick. But as you can tell, it's got a yellow tint to it. It has started to yellow. Luckily, I'm working on green, so I don't find this to be a problem. I have used it on um, on white, and once it's dried, it really doesn't look any different. But if it continues to yellow over time, I'm sure that would make a difference. Alright, so I'm just going to set this aside and let it dry. And I'll be back. Alright. Now, you can drill a hole with your Dremel. You could insert a bale in the resin while it was still curing. There's lots of ways to hang a piece like this. What I'm going to do is just take my craft knife and I've got a sharp pointed blade. And I'm just going to pick a place back away from the edge and I'm just going to bend my craft knife, putting just a little bit of pressure and you probably are asking yourself why am I doing it this way 
because basically I'm too lazy to order a hand drill. <laughs> too cheap, possibly. Alright, when you feel yourself coming through to the back side, flip it around. And go at it from the other direction. Now you're probably not going to be able to see the hole, but trust me, it's there. And it does go all the way through. Alright, and I'm just going to pair these two pieces together. Alright, let those be pretty. Alright, All right, here's a few of the other ones I've done with the other torpedo beads. So, super fun. A great fall project um, to make as a gift to give or just for yourself. Alright. Okay. Um, okay, here's the pieces that I've created from the other torpedo beads. This one is a like a peacock feather. And these are the maple leaf. Alright. You could add other things. Um, you could add an acorn. Would be cute to add to one. There's tons of things you could add. Fun, fun, fun. Great um, gifts for the upcoming season. Alright, if you're interested, I've got the links to all my social media down below. You can follow me there, and I shall holler at y'all later. Bye now.